thanks to CBS 13 to, to bring this to light. It was supposed to be released eight months ago, but lawmakers finally had their hands on the report of the state's investigation into serious deficiencies at California's troubled COVID testing lab. Deficiencies first exposed by CBS 13, a whistleblower investigation. This comes as the governor announced he's headed to Mexico and won't be available for comment. But investigative reporter Julie Watts has a copy of the report that whistleblowers have been waiting almost a year for. Yeah, guys, the report confirms many of our whistleblower allegations, and it misconstrues some others. Not surprisingly, the state did not issue sanctions against its own lab, despite findings of immediate jeopardy to patient health and safety, which we may have never known about were it not for brave whistleblowers. That lab should be shut down because they're jeopardizing people's life. It began with one whistleblower and quickly evolved into more than a dozen with allegations of shocking public health dangers at the state's COVID testing lab that they say the state tried to hide. Every patient sample is used with somebody's life. Unlicensed lab techs asleep while processing COVID samples, test swabs found in lab restrooms, incidents of contamination, swap samples, and tens of thousands of inconclusive COVID tests. Those were just the first of many shocking revelations from inside California's $1.7 billion COVID testing lab. The public deserves to know what's going on in their state lab, and everybody deserves to have correct results. First, the state denied the allegations, calling our reporting irresponsible, then quickly changed their response, acknowledging they had found significant deficiencies at the lab months earlier, which today's report says posed immediate jeopardy to patient health and safety. But the state didn't warn the public as COVID cases spiked. We've identified some of the issues and have since corrected it. The state has repeatedly downplayed issues at the lab and did it again in this report. For example, stating inspectors were not able to substantiate the local media outlets reporting that there was destruction of documents and data. Except we never said that. Here's our report. Two hours after we asked the state about what we'd found, we received evidence some staff were told to come in Super Bowl Sunday to alter records. According to whistleblowers, managers were called in during the Super Bowl to alter records, which revealed hundreds of employees did not have the documented competency required by law. We later received this email indicating managers were called in during the Super Bowl, quote, since this became even more urgent just hours before our first story was set to run. It is true that unlicensed, unsigned off people were operating instruments. Whistleblowers said they couldn't alter records after we warned regulators that day, and the state inspection confirms employees didn't have documented competency, something Perkin Elmer initially denied. I've never witnessed anything like this. The report also confirmed whistleblower allegations that management repeatedly made changes to the test, voiding the FDA authorization, then using the test on patients for months without properly validating the results were accurate. We cannot do experiment while we are testing patient samples. And they question the state's findings. It's a conflict of interest. Noting it's a CDPH investigation of its own state lab. Now, keep in mind, court records reveal separate from this, federal inspectors also found serious deficiencies at the lab, ranging from inaccurate test results to quality control failures. And the state's lab director testified last month his license was still in jeopardy. We'll have much more on this in the coming days as we dig in to this report.